Hi there, my name is Devin Tucker, and I'm going to be helping put together an audition video for the Philharmonic uh, bassoon audition. Uh, three separate sections to consider. There's the scale, C major, two times. First time is legato, second time is staccato. There is the required excerpt from Dance of the Tumblers. And then there's the third part, which is going to be an optional solo that's going to either highlight your strengths, uh, if you have something you can think of by yourself, Otherwise, you can use the one that's provided, the optional solo or uh, exercise. First things first, we have the C major scale. Most of the notes of this scale are gonna be pretty simple for bassoon. Everything is natural. You don't have to worry about too many thumb keys or pinky keys or any of that stuff. The hardest part of this scale, however, is gonna be flicking the A using your A flick. You're gonna be using your B natural and the C flick for the top three notes of the scale. Uh, as you're playing legato, you wanna keep your articulation light so that each note gets its full value without articulating between fingering so that you don't get a weird bumpy sound. You wanna make every uh, movement, every change, everything you're doing purposeful. Your C major scale, you're gonna have that half hole for the G, which needs to be big enough, and immediately after the G with the half hole, you're gonna be flicking that A. G to A is gonna be a weird transition. If you're not familiar with flicking, do your best. Okay, you don't hold this to vent it, you're just gonna flick it at the beginning of that A, and you're gonna use that as you articulate. Your tongue and the flick are gonna line up together. You can't have your tongue before or after the flick, because you're gonna get an extra note and potentially crack, and it's not gonna sound as good. The C major two octave scale is gonna be played at 84 BPM. Using a metronome, you'll get it set. Internalize that pulse, and then you'll play. Uh, one thing to consider is if you cannot play the scale comfortably or in a clean fashion at that tempo, a little less than 84 is probably okay, as long as it's clean and demonstrating your best ability. Um, I would consider practicing at a slower tempo and then working your way up to 84 if 84 is too fast for the eighth note subdivision. Okay, we talked about the half hole, we talked about the flicking. I'm gonna demonstrate the C major scale one octave First time through is legato, second time will be staccato. Again, with your metronome, get that set, get your pulse, internalize. simple as that. Half hole, flicking, make sure that your whole note is actually four full beats and not only two beats or one beat or whatever else. We want to use good air, support, good embouchure, good control, all of the above. All right, the second part of your audition is going to be the dance of the tumblers, Rimsky korsakov It's going to be quarter note equals 120, a bit faster than the scale, mostly eighth notes, mostly staccato. You want a light articulation. Again, don't think of these notes as being short. Think of having space between each one. Instead of dot, 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 you're gonna want dump, 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 dump. It's a little bit more bouncy. Also, check your key signature, that's so important. You have B naturals, or even marked above each of the Bs with a courtesy accidental to remind you to use your first finger and not the B flat with a thumb. Okay, the whole first line is pretty much the same. B naturals, eventually you get up to an E natural. First finger, we're not gonna do anything else. E natural is very simple. Measure 115. You go from E natural up to an F sharp and then G. Okay, that's gonna be kind of tricky. One more time, that G half note in measure 116, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your half hole is big enough, but then your F sharp is gonna be the exact same fingering as the G with the half hole, but the half hole is actually gonna be a little bit larger. And you're gonna either use your thumb F sharp, G slash G flat, or the pinky, whichever is easiest for you. I like to use my thumb F sharp slash G flat key whenever I can. It's just my thumb is stronger than my pinky and it's more reliable. Um, measure 115 and 116 should sound something similar to this. And you're going to want to hold that G for two full beats. You don't want to cut it shorter. Give it its full value. You have a half rest after that, two beats of rest to re- uh, recenter your focus and continue on. Again, you have B naturals, you have E naturals, you have several Gs with that half hole, you only have that one F sharp. When you play above 
G with a, the half hole, anything A or higher, you're gonna wanna flick each of those. Okay, if you're not, again, if you're not familiar with your flick keys, you have this big one here. This is gonna be your A and B flat. The one above that is gonna be your C flick and B natural. Then you have your D flick. You're gonna be using your thumb from the whisper key up to the proper flick key for the proper note. Sometimes you can get by with only flicking the first of several flick uh, notes in a certain passage. You should always strive to flick every single note just to be sure and just for that extra security. Um, this one has a has a notation about pay attention to the key signature. We talked about that. Articulation, staccatos and accents. You really wanna bring those out. They should be light and bouncy, not super short and pecky. And then there's also dynamic contrast. Right away in the beginning, we have fortissimo. You want it to be as loud as it can be, but also never louder than beautiful. Okay, you're gonna control your sound with your air and everything else. Once you get to rehearsal mark O in the second line, you have mezzo forte, it's gonna be a little bit softer. Again, tempo marking 120 with your metronome. If 120 is too fast, get to a comfortable uh, tempo that you can play and keep the integrity of the music that's written as well. Light articulation, dynamics, B naturals. Here we go. 120. Da, 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 da. You will internalize that pulse. Dance of the tumblers. And that's all it is. The third part of the audition process is going to be a solo. You have the option to showcase something you've been working on or something that's going to show your strengths on the bassoon and your current ability level. Otherwise, there is something that's provided. Um, I'll be playing the one that's provided, but anything you have is also, also an option. Looking at the solo in the Philharmonic Audition for Bassoon materials that are provided, uh, you have a lot of things to consider in this. Check your key signature always. In this case, I have two flats, B flat and E flat. Um, pay attention to accents, staccato, slurs, grace notes, and dynamics. All of those different elements of music that we always focus on, um, we need to be able to bring those out, okay? On the last chord, it says to choose any of the notes. I'm gonna choose the low B flat because that's gonna be tonic, that reflects the key signature, and it just makes more sense, I think, in my mind to play that note as I started on that note. Looking through the first measure, the rhythm, you wanna be very purposeful and very, very, yeah, I guess just purposeful in your intentions with that dotted eighth sixteenth. You don't wanna have a tripletized um, version of that. You wanna make sure that your counting is accurate. Subdivide down to the eighth note or even the sixteenth note to make that true. One E and a two E and a dum, dum, da dum, dum. Nice and easy. You're gonna see that figure or that rhythm come back time and time again. Moving forward, you have a slur in the fifth measure, G to F. It's a lot of fingers to like no fingers. Make sure that's purposeful and practical and intentional. Staccatos and accents to follow. In the second to last measure in that first line, we have a grace note that's gonna come right before the beat. Uh, e flat to D, it's not a hard transition. Um, make sure that it's timed really well and that you can find the second beat where the D is gonna land. You have D on the first beat, you have D on the second beat. Grace note just slightly before that. Um, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. The second line, we have more of the dotted 8th, 16th combinations. You have some more slurs. We also have some staccatos with grace notes from an E natural to an F. Really simple transition. Um, keep in mind your dynamics, keep in mind your articulations, keep in mind the half hole on, why am I, I have to assume, uh, on that G. Okay, you want to have a good half hole on your G. Everything else should be pretty fundamental and pretty simple. Tempo marking on this is quarter note equals 60 to 72. I'm going to choose to play it at that 72, but you can definitely play it at 60 BPM or anywhere in between. Again, if that's too fast, you can go slightly slower. We want to hear clean, accurate, and control um, in your audition. So whatever is going to help you prosper and put forth your best audition is gonna be ideal. Aim for those tempo markings, but again, do what you gotta do. I'm playing at 72. 
internalize. audition for the Philharmonic Ensemble. I hope it was helpful. Always take into mind the key signature, the tempo, any notes that are going to be hard, any passages that are going to include weird fingerings. Bassoon is notorious for having weird fingerings. Practice, practice, practice. Good luck. I think it'll be great. <laughs>